Kia ora, I'm Miriam McCummell. It doesn't favour the rich or the poor, the smart or the uneducated. Very few cases are hereditary. Alzheimer's disease, a kind of dementia, usually presents in older people, but it can strike any of us. And even when we're young or middle-aged and think we still have our marbles, the disease may have already begun its crippling course. But there may be ways of holding it off. And as Janet McIntyre reports, for those in the early stages, a cure could be in sight. Some never stop smiling. Some never speak. Brett can't walk without help. But turn the music on. He's the brother of an All Black, surname Shelford. There's a Komatawa, one of the longest serving educators in the country. It's not right yet, we need to work together. And Marcia, a former kapahaka lead singer. At the Fari Aroha Home for Dementia Patients, there are also people known for nothing. Patrick, what do you know about where he's come from? We don't know anything about Patrick's family. We haven't been able to find out. Therese Jeffs, chief executive of the home in Rotorua. So no one wants Patrick? We do. And he's happy here. If we can make a life for him here, then that's fantastic. Dementia, it's coming to us to a growing number of New Zealanders. As we live longer, more of us will succumb to this brain disease, most commonly Alzheimer's, where cells die, causing the brain to physically shrink and debilitate us. So much and so little is known about it, but there is hope. We're going to actually beat this disease. Professor Richard Fall from the Centre for Brain Research at Auckland University, as you'll hear tonight, is heading up a collaboration of researchers and medical experts for the first time working directly with dementia patients to fight the disease. Putting the human into the centre of the picture is actually the most obvious, yet it's quite revolutionary. This is going to give us a huge opportunity that we've never had before. An opportunity to study people like Tori Morgan. Are we still married? We are. <laughs> Forever. Tori, 81, a resident of Fari Araha, is confused at times, but okay. loves a chat. My turn, you can't have all the limelight. Um, my turn. My turn, yeah, my turn. Um, there were things like... Um, are we coming across a great... uh, as a happy couple? You are, absolutely. Now you'll smile all the time now. Tori, a former school teacher and principal who's devoted six decades of his life to education, was diagnosed in December. Can you give her a bit more? His wife, Wendy, had been concerned about him for about a year before there was a crisis. Is that right? He decided about 10 o'clock one night that he was going to eat some ice cream. So he got one of the really, really sharp kitchen knives, cut the ice cream with it and ate it off the sharp knife, yeah. where he was so lucky he never cut his tongue. Yeah. Is this the one we got on higher purchase? No, darling. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later he fell and um, I couldn't get him up. Dementia is just around the corner. I'm quite proud to say, well, there's a dignity attached to it. And so Does it scare you at all? When the doctor says to me, I've just asked you seven dementia questions and you just failed four. I've got a wonderful doctor. Hey. How tough is it on the two of you? Wendy uh, ignores it when, I, when I'm dopey, which is fairly often. <laughs> Oh, no. I want to thank you for asking that question. You accepted it, didn't you? You read all about it and you accepted that's what was happening. How are you coping with the fact he has this dementia? It all happened so fast. It's like the deterioration and um, coming into permanent care that I didn't even have time to kind of even get used to it. And you have those terrible thoughts too of have I done the right thing? But I knew in my heart that it was as much as I didn't want it to be. And I tried really hard for a long time. Excuse um, me, everyone. But she, I knew she's that, interviewing very well. You know, and I, and he, I knew he needed to be safe. 
your whole life changes and it's changed forever. It will never be the same ever again. Up next, how to stave off dementia. If we can delay it by five years, it's great. If we can delay it longer, that's even better. Keep your brain alive. And a bold new approach to care, a fully enclosed dementia village. If you don't like the way things are being delivered, then you need to do something differently. <laughs> Professor Richard Fall never leaves home without his brains. His briefcase full of brains. Just look at the evolution of the human brain going from a rat brain. He has already led internationally game-changing research about our most complex organ. And then we go to the Rolls-Royce, the human brain. Well, the most exciting finding has really been showing unexpectedly for the first time that the human brain can make new brain cells forever. And as I talk to you now, the more you stimulate the brain, the more brain cells you're making. So you're making brain cells as we speak. And the areas that push downwards won't function. He's living proof of his own theory. Side, at 72, he is still at the forefront of international brain research. When are you going to retire? It's not even in the dictionary. Enjoying life has got to give your brain a longer longevity in terms of its function. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. The frontal area here where But what's busying Professor Fall's brain cells right now really is the growing the problem of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia, diseases predicted to increase threefold, striking 150,000 New Zealanders by 2050. It wasn't a problem, you see, when people died at the age of 39 or 40 and life expectancy was low, but now people are living longer and um, there's a huge emphasis on longevity. Live longer. What they forget to say is, live longer, but keep your brain alive, you know? Is there a difference between just being forgetful and having Alzheimer's? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So forgetful, just where you've lost, put the keys is fine. It's when you don't know what to use your car keys for. That's the problem. By the time dementia is obvious, it's well established. For up to 25 years, plaques have been forming on brain cells, causing them to die. Eventually, the brain loses a third of its mass. A person with advanced Alzheimer's has lost 30 billion brain cells. And why does that happen? We don't know. Then sings my soul. The consequences can be devastating. Therese Jeffs, who runs Fari Aroha in Rotorua, is dedicated to caring for dementia patients, including her own mother, 82-year-old Gabrielle. You see her day by day deteriorating. Mm. Do you feel like you're losing your mother? I think in, in some ways we lost her a long time ago. She doesn't know my name. I'm not sure if she knows me, but when, every day when I go to see her, I always sort of like animated like, hi, it's Therese. Hi, it's Therese. They end up having losing their memory, becoming wasted, no longer being physically or intellectually active. Recent memories go first, the long-term memories go later, and so on. So there's a gradual overall deterioration of brain function. There is no known cure. Research has focused on trying to find drugs that will prevent the harmful plaques forming on brain cells, but none has worked, which is why Professor Fall is taking a different approach trying to find ways to stall the onset of the disease. If we can delay it by five years, that's great. If we can delay it longer, that's even better. Now I get to hit you. A new national right. research project okay. studying mm -hmm. people with early that's symptoms of dementia. I can't think of the word ravioli or... Um... People like Graham Newton, who first started uh, noticing signs a year ago. So how have you noticed things changing? But I do definitely forget words, even like the condition I've got. Mm -hmm. A network of clinics around the country will trial medical and non-medical therapies to see what works. Looking after your body in the best possible way, looking after your brain in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. Eating fish three times a week, increasing your omega-3. Physical activity, music therapy, dance therapy. They're complex actions to see which actually stimulate different parts of your brain. The most powerful thing about this is that people who are in the very earliest stage 
is where we could make a difference. I'm pretty confident that we can. Which is all well and good for humans, but what about mice with Alzheimer's? Up next, a new drug is reversing the damage. This is an entirely different approach. And is there a better way to care for our loved ones? New Zealand's first enclosed dementia village. So it's not isolating people, it's only doing what we're already doing, but better. In a lab in San Francisco, mice bred to suffer Alzheimer's disease are recovering. We were able to actually reverse uh, some of the degeneration that occurs in Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Frank Longo of Stanford University, whose work featured in Time magazine this year, is tackling Alzheimer's from another angle with a drug known as C31. This is an entirely different approach. A drug that makes brain cells more resistant to the toxic effects of plaques. And it's working in mice. They're basically looking for food. It's, you know, it's what they normally like to do. The mouse with Alzheimer's will keep looking into the same arm over and over again, even though there was no food there. And when we put the Alzheimer mice on our drug, they, their performance resembles that of the normal mouse, where they're much more systematic and checking because they can remember which arm they already checked. Our drug was actually able to bring those connections back in the very late stage Alzheimer's. So that was the part that could be reversed that we're excited about. How adaptable will the drug be to humans? We can't be sure. That's such a big jump from a, a mouse to a, a person. We are um, optimistic enough that we've invested quite a bit of work into moving into human testing. A phase two trial is about to begin in Europe. For the first time, the drug will be tested on people, 120 Alzheimer's sufferers. But even if it is successful, it will be a long time before it's in our pharmacies. We're talking at least six years to get this to people. So unfortunately for somebody who's in the mid stages of Alzheimer's now, six <laughs> years is a long time. And I, I w we may not be helpful. I wish we could be more helpful. For those people who have not begun Alzheimer's yet or in very early stages, I hope we will be of some help. But Professor Richard Fool says a drug alone is unlikely to be the answer. There's been nothing scientifically, unequivocally, which you can hang your hat on and say, this is a drug, take it. Brain cells are going to die at a slow rate. We have to wait and see the real evidence of this. There will be no cure for people like Gabrielle. But her daughter, Therese, the boss of Fare Araha, wants better care for her mum and all the residents. If you don't like the way things are being delivered, then you need to do something differently. With Therese at the helm, Fari Araha Care, a not-for-profit charitable trust, is building New Zealand's first completely enclosed dementia village in Rotorua. Based on the Hogaway village in Amsterdam, where residents live not all together in one institution, but in small groups in households which reflect their backgrounds and lifestyles. Each house with a full-time carer. There's a bar, a hairdresser and a supermarket where no real money changes hands. Residents are made to feel they're living normal lives. So where are we standing right here now? OK, we're standing in the formal household. So this is for people who have lived more formally, used to etiquette and manners, and you know probably have linen tablecloths and linen napkins. And down there we have? We have the rural, right down the end. People who live in the country like to live away from other people, don't like people walking past their front door. By the end of the year, Teresa's residents will move into their brand new version of Fare Araha, where she is convinced they will benefit. And we know that people are happier living in a community like something like this, where things are familiar to them. So it's about happiness more than living longer. Many of the residents, including Tori Morgan, accept the hand they've been dealt. It's not, it's not a crime. I'm not looking forward to it but I'm looking forward to people who are being involved, who understand, and that's going to be lovely. Mm. It's their families who struggle. I've lost the husband as he was. I've lost the man as he was. Have you lost your love for him? 
I haven't lost my love for him. I think it's, if anything, it's probably grown stronger. Yeah, and, hey darling, you better give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give you notice that hug. she's not built for me to hug her, <laughs> really. Uh, it comes as a bit of a surprise when you realise that you do love someone to a distraction, and that's how I feel about Wendy, eh? Yeah, and me about you. And another love story has been going off on our Facebook page. Jared Stoneman is a young man full of aroha for his great-grandmother who has advanced dementia. Jared has chosen to stay home and care for his nana, 93-year-old Katie, and later we'll show you their amazing relationship.